أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأول الأمر منكم Reminder always for myself and Abdul Qur'aji Sadai for miskeen of zalim jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Allahu wa la hayya la hayu ya qayyum, 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 Ya Rabbil Hajj Nazeem. InshaAllah it was a reminder in this holy month of Zul Qida, the holy month of Zul Qida and the immense reality of 11 what they have celebrations Garm sharif on the 11th of every month a gathering for the love of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al-Jilani Qaddasallahu Siru and the immense reality of 11 that is the reality of that Divinely mirror and the immense reality of real oneness that La ilaha illallah will never be found and it's a hidden treasure only wanting to be known but not stating that it will be known that Allah's alif is ever escaping, moving. As much as we approach the reality of the alif, as much as we try to approach that reality, Allah is moving further away, means that we move further away from that reality so that we can never encompass and we encompass only from that which Allah wants us to understand and that ocean and that reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah Alhamdulillah that is the reality of the movement of energy and for us it makes every common sense that anyone trying to reach to Allah's majestic might and grace, how could they possibly think that they just receive directly from Allah that might and that majesty. And the realness and the reality of that tawheed is that Allah sends everything to the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah because tawheed represents oneness and the kalima is an is a expression that purifies and takes away all sins and recalibrates the servant back to oneness. So immensity of the kalima that we recite all the time, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam it immediately recalibrates the soul the nafs and the servant back to the grace of Allah and the immensity of that power is the ocean of forgiveness because as soon as the kalima is recited Allah washes and purifies the soul and the body, the nafs and the ego from its sins and its badness. That's the amount of that power in that expression and its real understanding is our everyday life. The La ilaha illallah is a continuous flow to the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah And the pursuit of that love and the ish and the Real love for Allah is the movement towards the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So this is reiterating always this ocean of tawheed that people think, oh you think your shaykhs have power, oh you people love Prophet too much and again never understanding that no everything we do is actually our immense expression and love for Allah But they're not getting it, they're, they're thinking there's two or three. So, no, no it's, it's only but one and, and Allah is directing those whom love that, if you want me and you love me, فَتَّابِعُونِي means don't direct yourself to me, you're not going to find me. 
you should find me in the one whom is reflecting all my realities, all my grace and all my blessings to the best that creation can reflect. Not to Allah's reality, la shariq, there's nothing like unto Allah But for the best of what we can understand, the most purified of what we can understand in this world of creation that encompasses everything from the heavens to the earth, Allah made the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and then gave for us every seal throughout Qur'an, Khuluqul Azeem, that you are of a magnificent character. Allah calls nothing magnificent other than what Allah has made. So giving for us an ishara that, I have perfected this reality and alam al-shadeed al-quwwa and he has been taught by somebody immense in power throughout Holy Qur'an Allah is continuously giving us and pointing to us that this light of Muhammadun Rasulullah and not like you and other creation. This creation is of an immense purity, this creation is of immense light, immense reality and when you direct from Allah's love, He directs the servant towards that reality, now you know you've been guided. And Allah describes, there is no guidance, lihada Allah, there is no guidance except that those whom Allah guides and don't think that everybody has been guided. Means the guidance doesn't come easy. People may accept Islam in billions, in trillions over the centuries and in, in beyond the amount and the count of understanding. But whom Allah guides is truly guided. Means that when Allah want to grant the servant guidance, He directs them to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad because that is the reflection of Allah in this ocean of creation. And through the reality of the soul of Prophet we learn what generosity is, what love is, what laws are, what compassion is. All of these realities are reflecting to us from a standard that we can understand. Imagine trying to understand compassion from Allah's standard it would be utterly unachievable and everybody would say, well you know that's God and there's no way for us to do anything and forget about it. Everything would be of a ridiculous nature. What, what is mercy? What is generosity? Are, are you comparing yourself with God's divine generosity that can never be understood the extent of that generosity? So means that the names and attributes, they must be mirrored and reflected onto something created and it can't be just anything, has to be the most perfected for Allah is perfect. When Allah wants to be known, He's not going to be known by something broken, something slightly imperfected, Allah is going to be known by that which He has perfected. And as a result stand khuluq al azim Allah praising Himself that I have made a magnificent character. These are the dialogue because we, we don't read Qur'an thinking our self is there at a level higher. We read Qur'an as a dialogue between Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad because I negated myself at the door, La ilaha anta subhanika inni kuntum min ad dhalimeen Ya Rabbi, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not interested in knowing about myself, I'm asking to be nothing. As a result the beautific dialogue of Allah on how He guides and praises the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that Ya of a magnificent character. Allah is praising that what He has created, He's very happy with. And as a result, these beatific realities to perfection is reflecting out. We say again because if 
somebody understands that then they begin to understand what is the immensity of tafakkur. So anybody who's not practicing their tafakkur then how are they trying to achieve the light and the love of Allah Through their actions, through the, their prayers, through the zakat, all of these, all of these actions are, are but a minute reality in the perfection and the cleansing of their mirror. Your salah is a means in which to purify your mirror. As we said that it's a means, it's not the end. When we ask Muslims to meditate, they say, Ya Shaykh we don't need to, we make salah, you are wrong. Your salah was a means to something you didn't get there. So we described many times before when we were children or other people were children, I can't describe things bad for myself but when, <laughs> when kids were small they would go ring doorbells on people's doors, ding, ding and then run. You ring the doorbell and then run. Those naughty kids, I don't know why they did that but every time they would ring a doorbell and then run. That's everybody's salah, 99.9% of people who pray they pray like a child ringing a doorbell and running, right? You did all these movements as if you achieve something and then as soon as it's finished something, something and run. Well what happened, what was the point of this prayer? It was something you had to do to get rid of and finish it and you, you did it and they think that's enough. But that, that was not the purpose of salah. And that they gave their five bucks to somebody, uh, I did my charity and that was it. That was not the purpose of their zakah, means that all of this was in order. One you had to testify so that bring yourself into oneness and that you're nothing. And when you're nothing there's nothing but Allah and Muhammadun Rasulullah that doesn't mention me and you in there but that there's nothing but Allah and that Prophet is the messenger of Allah representing Allah is the imam and the way to Allah Then you begin on, on everything you're doing is then you're going to make your zakah, jahada, zakah and then salah. Why? Because zakah means now cleanse yourself. Your zakah you have to wash and make wudu. Now your inner zakah you have to pay, you have to give an alms, you have to purify from what you made and take it off of you, take the burden and the badness off of you and then now you're ready for salah. But this salah was to communicate with Allah was to Park your physicality, discipline it by its movements and the energy that Allah is providing in the movement. And as soon as they make their tahiyyat and make their shahada and give salams, their soul is supposed to be in Divinely Presence and communicating with the Divinely Presence. Means that they sit in there and after their tahiyyat, and even in the Salaamu Alaikum Ayyuhan Nabi. Is that Allah saying, before you go anywhere remember that you're giving Prophet in your prayers, before you closed your prayers you're giving salams in present tense. How could you go anywhere? How could you move? You gave salams in present tense to the reality and the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad So then now you visualize Prophet is right in front of you in your salah. And all ibadillah salihin are all around. And Allah before you left the salah, you're saying, As salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. Oh, Prophet is right in front of me. And salamu alaykum ibadillah salihin because they're all with Prophet, they don't leave Prophet alone for a second, not even a fraction of a second. How you could leave? 
Where, where are you going? Means that you have an audience now. So then we can see that 99.9% .9 of the people they ring the doorbell and ran which could be quite annoying because you're in that audience and you got up and left. So what then tafakkur is teaching people? That you, you are supposed to be connecting and you want the energy and that reality to be dressing. And you don't really know what we're saying in salah and we really don't know who we're facing. But when we begin to really understand and meditate this is the month of the reality of a mirror and that what Allah gave to us of the immensity of our prayer. And that's not in the middle of a mosque to do this or in the middle of a big crowded jama'ah you start to sit and, and identify yourself because whatever we teach is very private. That's why the shaykhs they pray very fast in front of people. This is not something to gain the attention of people all of a sudden making her, your every sort of significant connection in a crowded jama'ah. But these are the, the personal and intimate relationship with Sayyidina Muhammad and with Allah Most High and they're usually best done after Asr when you're by yourself, at Fajr when you pray by yourself. And the concept and the understanding of this mirror is immense that La ilaha illallah is reflecting to Muhammadun Rasulullah And then Allah grants us that, I want them to make the real salah. And Allah gave the words, Prophet did not come up with these words for salah, that the words and the recitations were told to him and this is the way Allah wanted the prayers and the words in the prayers to be recited in the order that it is recited. Because it's a dialogue between Allah and Prophet and this is the greatest gift to the nation that I'm a hidden treasure and I'm going to put into your salah that you're a nation in which will every time you pray you don't understand where your soul is but you should understand from the words that you're reciting you're in the presence and facing Sayyidina Muhammad in every salah. So imagine then the world of souls that this immense soul and there's trillions and trillions and trillions of souls. As soon as they go, Allahu Akbar and they begin to pray their souls are all in that audience. How big is that face facing all these souls? Something can't be imagined. And are you facing the soul from the ground or are you you're facing from face to face? Or are they all held in a hand that faces the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad Means that we can't even understand. But what Allah gave to us of an immense gift that if they would just sit and contemplate the words of their salah they would understand what gift I gave to this nation. That as soon as they say they, they're in their prayer and they're giving salams to Prophet means all these realities and all these months that have been taught is that when you're praying the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad because anytime you give salams you have to be face to face to somebody. You can't give salams in present tense to the back of somebody's head. Allah has the holy face, Wajikil Kareem facing you in your salah. That's why anyone come to debate and say, what you're talking about? First thing is that first go read the words of your salah and tell me what you understood from them. You're saying, as salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi that the face, the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad is facing you. That's the gift Allah gave that my Divinely mirror you're praying in the presence of that mirror 
And that face is the face that dresses you. That face is the face that blesses you. That face is the face that puts every tajalli upon your reality and takes every badness away from you. And then Allah would not have sent that reality except that it is a mercy to all of creation, rahmatan lil alameen, that it is a mercy to all of creation. And the greatest nation is the nation that was given this mirror. The greatest nation is the nation that was given the mirror and the salah to say and to be in the presence and in the face, in the presence of the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad Means what a gift Allah gave to this nation and that Allah perfected the faith of all other Prophets only in the Isra wal Miraj. So that all nations would come to that reality. So imagine then on Isra'i wal Miraj, why then the Prophet was taken all the way to Jerusalem where 124,000 Prophets were then brought in their physicality to be present with Prophet resurrected and brought into his holy presence and Allah gave them the Muhammadan Salah. And then they prayed and said, As salamu alayka ya Nabi. In his physical presence, they gave their shahada, they gave the salams, and the light of Prophet dressed all the messengers and all the Prophets of Allah. And as a result, all their nations are under the nation of Muhammadun Rasulullah. Rabbil mu'mineen wa Rabbil kafireen, ya Rabbil alameen. That there is nothing under or outside of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad The nation that has accepted Islam and the nation that is not accepted yet and is responsibility for us to do dawah to that nation. That's why the highest, highest khidmat in our life as a Muslim is to do dawah. There is no Muslim who can come into the world and say, I'm not doing dawah. Your wasted life, your life is to propagate the religion of Islam and propagate the love of Sayyidina Muhammad This is the highest purpose of our existence. We're not here to accumulate wealth, we're not here to accumulate degrees and bachelors and, and, and law and, and all these different degrees, we're not here to accumulate whatever we want from dunya, Allah gave us an existence to come and worship. And the highest form of worshipness is khidmat, that seek out knowledge. When you find that knowledge that teaches who you are and where you came from, you now begin to understand your purpose. Means that these souls will be brought back to Muhammadun Rasulullah and our life has a meaning and a purpose when we dedicate it to da'wah, when we dedicate it to propagating the message, the beatific message and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why then you spread the teachings. You know for bad people they ask you to join their groups. And then they tell their groups, everybody spread our page and, and keep putting our pages out and do this and do that. And Allah says in Qur'an that when you share in a good deed, when you find a group or a person doing good and you share with them in the good, you say, oh you're, you're about to feed people, that's like $15, oh, how about if I give you seven and we do it together. When you share in the good, you get the reward of the good. And if you come across people doing bad and you say, how about you know, I come in with you on that, you will receive the portion of the bad that people do. So means then this da'wah is this reality, is you take these articles and you spread them. You take the, the, the different charity buttons, you spread them. You take the books, you spread them. 
anything that we can do to give our life a higher purpose. Go out and give food, go out and, and take a shirt from Fatima Zahra, there's a, a volunteer button on muslimcharity.com. You click the volunteer button, you get yourself the blue shirt and go buy five hamburgers. People say, okay well what do I have to do? How do you have to ask what do you have to do? Go get five hamburgers and give them out with the shirt and take a picture that you're giving shirts out. We post it and Allah inshaAllah give you more himma, more strength and people say, oh alhamdulillah that's great. Then you go buy 20 hamburgers and then you send a letter, we have even a copy of a letter. They take this letter, customize it for your area and go to Costco and say, please before you throw this food away can we salvage it? This is our charity, this is our organization, this is what we're doing. And, and this gives our life a purpose, this gives our, our life a time in that mirror so that when Prophet, if we understood this whole reality and this talk of this satellite, then imagine now you do these good deeds, these guys who are running and giving food and, and doing all these amazing… You know this, this meals that uh, Haji Misbah is picking up in Chicago, I think they're like $20 a meal, it's called factor. And their keto friendly diet is super expensive. He picks up a, like 800 of these meals every time he goes out. <laughs> what most people we can't afford for somebody to give us, you know, five of these meals every day and put it in our refrigerator. Allah says, Don't worry, I send them to you people free. And he pick, you know, thousands of these meals to give out to the inner cities where they don't eat like that portion, very fancy the dishes and dinners, Allah's great. And the reward that you get for doing that and doing this khidmat, coming and reciting the gentlemen who are opening the center all the time, servicing the center, people all over Pakistan, mashallah, entire we have like six or seven orphanages, 600 wells by now. All these people whom are, whom are doing what they have to do and the untold hundreds that are behind the scenes supporting. The shaykh, his job is like the maestro of an orchestra to inspire people to rise, that come to who you really are. You know those two feet of yours, if you use it in Allah's way you'll be astonished at who you are and what Allah wrote for you. And when the maestro is moving everybody is playing and playing the role that they promised Allah that they would play. And people can look back and see, this is astonishing how this little group, they're like ants that are everywhere doing everything that they can. Why? So that when you go back to your salah and you're in your prayer and say, I don't really know if I have anything to offer. May assalamu alaykum ya Nabi. Forgive me my wrongs and give me himma and a dress to do more. And the shine of the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad to dress your soul because you fed people, you helped people, you put a face and a smiling face on an orphan or you took your rizq and your sustenance that, oh I'm so busy I don't have time to do that but I want to share in what you're doing. I want to share in helping you to propagate your message, to your food to go out, your orphanages to be fed. So that when you sit in your salah and think, I have nothing, As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Nabi and that the light of Prophet to dress us and to bless us. And you're going to sujood and asking, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, take away difficulty from me. Hardship on myself and my family and those whom I love and my community. That your nazar be upon me, that your, your dress and the himma to be dressed upon me and take away obstacles from my path. So that my ajr al azim that Allah give me a great, a great ability and great gifts and lights that Allah reward because everything is a gift from Allah that don't think you pick up you know 500 dishes because you were clever, Allah loves you and says that, no, 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 I don't want this for these people, I want Him to pick it up. 
because I'm going to now reward him greatly for what he's doing. That means these things are not coming to us by, by chance and good luck and, and good fortune, is Allah's dressing for us. When He loves us, He wants to give us more, more what? Good deeds. I want to write a lot on your accounts. Ya Rabbi open for us what's hidden, open for us what's closed. The foods that we can give away, the people that we can help, the support that needs to be done, all of these and the time that we take for sitting for zikr and for salah so that when you're in your salah, salaamu alaykum ya Yuhannabi, the Prophet begin to reflect immense lights. And those are the lights of Allah that's from the ocean of La ilaha illallah when Allah begin to dress because the switch when we don't understand that Prophet is a key, is a mifta rahmah, Allah is a lock and Allah is expecting that Prophet to activate. Why is not activating in your salah and shining upon you? And everybody thinking they're going to get it directly and the real tawheed is from La ilaha illallah to the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah And as a result that reflection began to dress the souls, bless the souls. When they begin to feel that and understand that, then they understand what Allah gave to them from their shaykhs and their guides. And the shaykh and the guide who understands and teaches this reality is teaching that when you sit and connect, you're asking from that light of Muhammadun Rasulullah to begin to reflect. And every time they make their salah they're asking from that light to dress me, bless me and spend just a few minutes in that light and that dress, go into sujood and cry and ask Allah for help, for Prophet to give help and support and madad. And then the salah becomes real. Not every time, in the middle of the day you're busy and you can't do that. But at the times you can, you understand that this salah is the greatest gift that Allah can give. Allah is giving a gift to that He gave to no nation because that, that gift has to be Muhammadun Rasulullah. How could it be any other nation that I'm going to give to you my key and in your prayers you'll be, you'll be facing that key. And from that holy face comes my Divinely lights upon your nation. Then you understand how blessed your nation and our nation is and the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha.